Not again. Are you kidding me? What the? Mother nature. How did that happen? Hello friend, I'm Brett from Brett's Basement Woodshop and welcome to my woodshop. In today's video, I'm going to be making a wooden game board and I'm going to make it extra fancy. It'll be made from some beautiful black walnut and have bright colors and magnetic game pieces and a few other surprises. I begin by sticking a paper template to some hardboard with spray adhesive. Um, I don't think this is going to fit. Nope, not that way either. So because the game board won't fit on a single slab, and because I'm fortunate enough to have two slabs that came from the same tree, I have the option of book matching and joining these two slabs together. And for the few of you who are watching who don't know what book matching is, let me explain. That's where you take two adjoining pieces from the same tree, as I said, and you can open it up like the pages of a book, like that. And then what that gives you is a mirror image of the grain from the opposing sides. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is remove this bark and put some straight edges on these. And to keep these book match pieces in their proper orientation, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the faces so I don't forget. smell a walnut. To make sure that I'm getting a nice straight edge, I'll attach the slab to a plywood sled. The game board is going to be in the shape of a circle, so we don't have to worry about the screw holes. They'll just get cut off later. The game board I'm making has a few different names. You might be familiar with the game Aggravation. The commercial version is played with marbles and dice. Parcheesi has another popular game played on a similar game board with markers. Not markers and dice. The game my customer asked me to build is called Fast Track. It's played with playing cards instead of dice. I've been approaching this next step of the project with a bit of trepidation. What I'm trying to achieve here is a nice flat straight glue edge so that the seam is pretty much invisible. I did receive this electric hand plane for Christmas. I think two Christmases ago. I did some practicing off camera on my actual project and it didn't go so well. You can see here that I've got just a little bit of bark left. I don't want any bark in the glue seam at all. So I do have a little bit of room to play with here. And this, this is sapwood and I haven't really decided how much sapwood I want running through the middle of the game board. When I got to the end of my pass it's scooped out here. I'm gonna give this one more shot and see if I can even it out. I may end up using my tabletop jointer and see if that works better. And if it doesn't, I always have the table saw as a backup. But it's getting kind of late and I've got church in the morning, so I'm gonna put this to bed for tonight and come back at it fresh tomorrow. Well, now it's the next day and I'm gonna give it one more shot with the electric hand plane. If I, I hope I don't screw it up more. So I had these two pieces clamped together and then I was planing this edge on both of them at the same time. So when you do that, if you get some snipe at the end, it compounds, it doubles because you're doing it on both boards. So that's what happened here. I actually did fix the snipe, or the big gouge that I made somewhat. There's still a little bit of snipe on this side. But I also introduced a little bit of a crown. It wants to rock in the middle. So it's not straight and flat and it's not going to make a great glue up. So I'm going back to the table saw. So here's a trick on the table saw to get a nice even glue edge. I've marked my joint on both sides of the board. And what I'm going to do is run one board on this side of the blade. And then I'm going to move the fence over and run this board on the other side of the blade. And even though I use my digital angle finder to make sure that my blade was 90, 
I trust the digital angle finder more than my eyeballs in a square. Even if it's off just a little bit, if you run both boards on the same side of the blade, that minor degree that it's off will compound and you won't get a great matchup. But by running on either side of the blade, you'll make sure that you've got a perfect matchup even if it's not a perfect 90. It's the same concept as if you were using a jointer and you ran one face up against the fence and the other face away from the fence. I think you get the picture. This handy little jig is used for making mortises for floating tenons. And I made it for a fraction of the cost of a domino joiner. I made a tutorial video on how to make this jig. You can click the info card up in the corner or the link in the description if you're interested. For this project I'm using Boss Dog wood glue. I really love the tip on this bottle. I also love that the glue is made by a friend of mine, Nick, from Nick's Custom Woodworks. I like supporting a maker like myself instead of a big faceless company. I left a link to where you can get this glue and support a fellow maker. These panels didn't come out quite flat and now they won't fit through my 12 and a half inch planer. So I took them over to a friend's cabinet shop to run through his 20 inch planer. But that didn't eliminate the twist either. So plan B was to flatten them with my slab flattening jig and a big scary router bit with carbide inserts. That did the trick, but it made a real mess. So now that my boards are nice and flat, now I can start plunging all the holes for the game board. So I made this template, has all the holes in it except for the center hole. I intentionally did not make the hole in the center because this is going to be a circular game board and the circle cutting jig that I'm using uses a smaller pin and a quarter inch hole would be too big for that. So everything's going to be measured off of that center pin. So I'm going to attach this template with a little bit of double stick tape, plunge all my holes, and then I'll drill a smaller pilot hole right in the center before I take the template off. So now I get to plunge 133 holes times two because I'm making two boards. <laughs> Wait, you forgot to drill the center hole, dum-dum. That's better. I usually like to jazz up my projects by taking them to the next level, and this project is certainly no exception. Instead of just drilling holes for pegs to go in, I'm going to use steel bearings in each of the 133 spaces and set them permanently in place with epoxy. That way the magnetic gain pieces won't fly off when you spin the board on the Lazy Susan base. This was my first time using a two-part epoxy. I feel like I did a pretty good job of estimating how much volume was going to be needed to fill all the holes. What I didn't do a good job of estimating was how long it was going to take to fill them all. I thought a needle would help me fill from the bottom up to try to eliminate bubbles but it turned out that that process was way too slow and the epoxy started to set up before I could even get half of them filled. Taking the needle off made it go much quicker. Since I don't have a wide belt sander, the flattening jig worked just as well to level off the overfill once the epoxy had cured. Here's that big scary router bit I was talking about. Next I drilled a slightly larger hole to fit the circle cutting jig. This jig is Drew Fisher's design. It's adjustable to make various sizes of circles on the table saw. I'll leave a link to Drew's video in his channel, Fisher's Shop, in the description below this video. In the bottom of the game board I wanted to make a recess to store the game pieces, 
I used a dovetail bit on the edges of the recess and on the lid that slides into it. Then I made the hole deeper with a straight bit. Each of the lines on this board was made with a V-groove bit on a handheld router. A CNC would have made this project go so much quicker and more accurate, but I don't have one of those either. Of course I sanded it nice and smooth before and after routing, but I skipped showing the sanding because that's boring. Wait, drilling holes is boring. Never mind. Now for the best part of every woodworking project, applying the finish. For this, I chose Willie's Wood Honey, an all-natural, food-safe finish made from oil and beeswax. It's made by another maker friend of mine, Will, from Flat Woodworks. Will was nice enough to give me a discount code to offer my viewers. For more details, see the description. Look at how the walnut just glows with this Willie's Wood Honey. And it smells great too. Once the oil and wax finish had cured, then I could start applying the colors. This was a multi-day process because the oil-based paint pens need a day or so to cure before adding another layer. Otherwise, you run the risk of rubbing off the color underneath, and I put on three or four layers of color. Once I was done with the colors, I shot this Instagram reel. I felt like the colors needed some protection so they wouldn't rub off, so off camera, I added about five coats of lacquer. And then, this happened. What is happening here? Oh my gosh. As it turns out, nothing sticks to wax, especially lacquer. The paint pens didn't reveal a problem, but the lacquer sure did. As the lacquer dried, it started to pull away everything that was on top of the wax, including the colors. I was so frustrated at this point. I'd already put in so much work on these boards and now they were garbage. So I had to scrape it all off and sand it back to bare wood again. I even had to reroute the lines. I reached out to my woodworking community on the Lumberjocks forum to get some guidance on finishes that would be compatible with each other and came up with Danish oil, which is really dummy proof to apply. You just flood it on with a brush or a rag and then wipe off the excess. I let that cure for a couple of days before repeating the whole process of painting on the lines and colors. And then to protect the color, I used a spray shellac instead of lacquer. The shellac needed to be sanded back a bit with a white Scotch-Brite pad, which is the equivalent of a 600 grit sandpaper. and then it was safe to apply a top coat of wood wax. Well, despite all the trouble I had, these boards turned out really beautiful. And it's really unique with the magnetic game pieces, the onboard storage, and the Lazy Susan. Thanks for watching.